it, it probably actually costs more to use real dogs it than it does. It's just it always just looks kind of bad. That uh that whole dog um origin murdering her mom thing made the internet round meme rounds pretty hard there for a little while. It was I like didn't catch any this of those. is gonna be a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I liked the little uh, thief dog that they had. I thought that was pretty sweet. I, I haven't watched it. Oh, okay. I haven't watched it. And, and feel free to spoil it if you have yeah. to. No, it was, it was fine. Uh, they have a thief dog with him, and he's only got one eye, and his, name, his name's Winky. <laughs> I uh, think it's fucking great. Winky. So, not a stretch. How's this beer? Good. So, uh, I guess we can say we are back. Uh, and and I brought back a beer. I actually told Bender I would. If, well, let me let me digress a little bit. With me, as almost always, Damn, that's really good. Would be Bombcast J. Hey, and then of course, almost a slightly less as always as Jay, but almost here quite a bit. It would yeah. be Bender. Hello. Uh, uh, suspiciously absent is not the flop because she's just always going to be absent since she quit. She's even blocked our thread. I keep meaning to take her off of it. <laughs> Cause really? Because we, she we silenced us? She te- we text too much, apparently. Son during the of day. a bitch. I know. I'm actually genuinely mad about yeah, that. Yeah, she <laughs> has. She's not. I mean, she's cut out the cancer, man. Cut oh. out the cancer. Not, that's well, going to remind me about cutting out the cancer. Divorce that's some, papers are in the mail. <laughs> that's something in the Throw It to Missy segment uh, uh, that I. And I think we should keep the name in honor of the late Melissa Bohannon. Yep. <laughs> uh, we, we're going to. Uh, but remember, cutting out the cancer. That's something I want to yeah. bring up. Uh, but. This yesterday, I did something that I had not done in a long time, and it was kind of it was a good timing because next week I'll be doing something there again. But so my brother come in town because he had a doctor's appointment up here with a specialist, mm-hmm. and so it was also my my sister in law his wife's birthday, uh, twice his wife, two times. Uh, it was her birthday, so we we went down. First off, we went down to Pie Guys, which is a yeah. very good pizza, mm-hmm. but that uh, Giselleg right beside it, yeah, that's awesome. Have you seen it? Have you no. been heard of it? Have I you have been heard to of it? it? So it's a it's I would call it a beer sauce shop for trendier people, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, where's this at now? It's down in uh, Manchester in the Grove. Okay, okay. Uh, but no, they've got they've got everything they have individual is for, to go, yeah. mm-hmm. and it's in the coolers, and they're all twenty percent off to go. Oh, that's cool. But that doesn't make sense if it's all to go. Then that's just the price, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, I think so. Yeah, you but, know, I went to a place called Chillax. Same thing. All to go beers. Oh, and Wins- twenty percent off. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like okay. <laughs> uh, and then the other thing they have is they have twenty eight taps. Mm-hmm. And but what I like about them, and I don't know why all bars don't do this, and it drives me fucking nuts that they don't. They've got a little sign up below on their little chalkboard or whatever. It says beers one through ten sour, eleven through twenty IPAs. 21 through what? Ales or lagers, and then stouts, and then other. It's like, group your beers. Yeah. It's not that hard. That's like the menu at the 109 Tap House. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you got to do it when you have 109. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, not the best place to go drink beer. No, it's not. And yeah. I wonder how often those 109 lines get cleaned. Probably not often. Once. No, yeah. The once a year. Because there's those. Because if you have 109 taps, and I'm. I know I'm. This is going to sound outrageous. The number I'm about to say, but seventy of them probably those kegs sat there for a long time. Yeah, yeah. It's just insanity. But anyway, so we went to the Giselleg, and I think that's how you pronounce it. And then Pie Guys, great pizza I would have by said the Gesselig. way. Uh, maybe, yeah, it could be it. But Pie Guys pizza off the charts good. Yeah, uh, is it single slice? Yep. I thought so, yeah. Or our whole pizza, whatever you want to do. But yeah, it's just. But generally, you can get yeah, like it's a big New York, York style. style. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, we just rolled right down the road, and went somewhere I hadn't been in a long time, and that was Schlafly. Mm-hmm. We went to the Bottle Works for a little while. And I got oh, nice. to tell you, it felt good. It felt mm-hmm. it felt like going back to your grandparents after COVID. You know what I mean? Yep. Like I hadn't been there in a long time. Uh, and so, side note to that, Missy and I, so the events are starting back up. They do art outside this coming weekend. Mm-hmm. And so the beer we're drinking is called Haze in the City IPA, and this was from uh, the Little Hop in the City festival they had because they didn't have massive hop in the city this mm-hmm. last yeah. year. So, and typically they have a festival beer. And I saw this, so I said, "Well, I have to grab it." And but anyway, they don't do since you don't have these big events, they don't have volunteers like they used to. Well, I guess just because Missy and I had worked so many, and we. They like us, and I, mm-hmm. I, I become friends with like Lo, the person who does all these organize organizes all these. Mm-hmm. She sent out an email to about like sixteen people to volunteer for Art Outside, and so Missy and I are going to work from noon to three on Art Outside, and all you have to do is go around to all of the uh, 
exhibitors yeah. and see if they need food, drink, oh, that's water. Awesome. Oh. And for that, you get free beer. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I always leave with as many cases of beer as I can carry of whatever's out of season. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Oh, nice. Yeah, so we're doing that. So it was kind of cool to stop in there and have a couple of beers. And again, I think Tom said it one time best, you know, Schlafly, um, they, they certainly they, they tried with their Ibex sellers and stuff, and they the I won't say the craft scene has passed them. I'm gonna say they're steady Eddie. They make great yeah, beers. Yeah, they're a standard. They make they make very damn solid beers, but they don't get too crazy on what those are, and right. they kind of just stay steady Eddie throughout the whole thing. I mean, this haze here, I mean, is extremely solid. Like it's very very good. I'm enjoying it a lot. Oh, well, that yeah, was my really first good. drink, and I like that one a lot. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I mean, that's like a, be... that's almost a four out of five for a hazy beer yeah. for me. Yeah. yeah, the colors real light. Yeah, it, it is like lemonade. It's great. Six percent. Yeah, yeah, good beer. Um, so anyway, we did that, and then you know, I know my audience with my brother and how he's an old kid of 70s rock music so i took him to uh rock and brew so he could see all the posters and since that's a uh, you know uh gene simmons owns that place so yeah. i thought he'd enjoy that so we did that and then we uh, took them back to the hotel and me and missy came home and polished off a bottle of wine while we watched walking dead and and uh something you're else. still on that uh, it's it's coming to an end we gotta finish it we're, we got we got a john bender this motherfucker and finish that the damn true. thing i jumped off in season six and i never looked back but uh yeah. so so that was my weekend uh bender we won't go into too many details but um we did me, missy and i did stop by the service for yeah. your wife's stepdad yeah father in law uh, father stepfather in law stepfather in law he was like her dad so. but he was a cool yeah cool yeah, great dude guy. All, and, and i gotta tell you this and, and i've said this i don't know if we've ever talked about this on air uh i'm sure we have but uh i don't know that there's an there's an older woman on the planet that has a bigger crush on me than than rachel does love him da, she just loved me so i thought well we got to go by there because if i'm gonna hug her on any day this has got to be the day yeah and i gotta tell you this and i know rachel won't rachel won't listen to this because why would she um i think and i'm sure there were some hard days and stuff but as far as a person i've ever seen at a funeral of mm-hmm. whose significant other died diane just had that that's the way you want to handle it. Oh yeah. She was very happy that all her every she goes, everyone I love is here, so I'm, yeah. it's hard for me to be sad. Yeah. And when she talked about him, she just told and smiled yeah. ear to ear. It was awesome. Yeah, it was uh she's definitely the strongest out of all the kids. Like insanely strong. Uh she's the one who had to make the decision to tell him to stop, you know, do not retes- resuscitate. And she's broken down a lot. Like if Journey comes on, it's fucking over. But uh, because was that his jam? That's that was their wedding song. Oh, which one? Which one it is? I forget now. Uh, but yeah, which we got to speculate which one? It's not small town girl. No, no. (laughs) Uh, light or I don't know. Um, but they have like verses and uh inscribed in the inside of each of their rings it's it's very white trash but they loved each other. (laughs) I wouldn't say that's white trash. What that is is a product of the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you say that because my buddy, uh, my buddy lives on the street from me. Threw a seventieth for his dad on Saturday, and that their wedding song came on, and Rachel like started crying a little bit, and she was like, "It's just their song." And then John goes, "Oh, that's my parents' song too." I'm like, "Yeah, every white couple in America's <laughs> wedding song." It's gonna be that, that demographic. That's gotta be faithfully. That's yeah, gotta it be is. It. That's, that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah. their number one love song. Yeah. Right? Uh, so I mean it sucked, but you know. Uh, well, so and the reason I've been fun, and the reason I bring it up is not because and, and I certainly you know I, I just uh, Diane's always been the best yeah. you know to me and, yeah and you know we love Rachel but I even went up to the how can I describe it stupid hair brother in law that you have who's Michael's a great kid fucking mullet great kid he's, he's a pharmacist one. and makes. Well over six figures, you know, it's like in the higher end curly, of the six figures. Yeah. And stupid curly haired mullet, mullet. <laughs> curly haired mullet, like every kid through COVID. It's like he's sixteen. He's but, a fucking child. Yeah, but anyway, I went up to him because you had kind of told me. I said, "Man, I'm," uh, you know, I said, "Hey, sorry to hear about your dad." I said, "But uh, you know, I'm very happy to see you." And I hear from Bender that you've been coping with it the right way. And he goes, "What do you mean?" I go, "Well, you're handling your morning the way you should handle it if you're a man's man." And he goes. And he said, "There were blank." I go, "You've been drinking a lot." And he yeah. goes, oh, "Oh, he goes constantly." Yeah, <laughs> just all fucking day. Like he got up today and we were doing some stuff, and he's like, "I don't know if I can drink today." 
I'm like, oh, it's been, you know, a solid week and a half of drinking every day. And I've been trying to hang in there with him, but I'm getting old, man. Oh, that's <laughs> tough. Yeah, that doesn't even sound fun anymore. Like, I'm not getting drunk every night, but and then Saturday we did get pretty hammered. So, whatever, though. It was, it's it's you, been did, a shitty weekend, but we made the best Now, of did it. you end up going by Oktoberfest? We didn't end up going. Uh, Sunday, uh, Rick's mom came over and they just did a bunch of cleaning and going through stuff. She, uh doesn't know how to do any of that like bills or anything so we've been trying to like set all that up and oh, like okay. decipher all of jerry's passwords and because he had online bill paying but he still went to each individual website and paid the bill instead of yeah. setting them up up in the bank yeah so it's been fun it's yeah. been a good time <laughs> now uh jay and i toyed with the idea and i told about oktoberfest and i told you jay i had a story about oktoberfest for one i hear it wasn't that greatly attended this oh, year see, compared, I, I had some friends go on Saturday and they said it was absolutely packed. But oh. I, I don't know what they're basing it on. Yeah, that. and then the two, there was a beer shortage compared to other years, and, and uh, everything's had a shortage. This well, year, no, uh, I got on inside information when I was at a uh, the beer sauce shop that Summit, which is one of the larger distribution mm-hmm. companies, who's also in dire straits apparently, yeah, m- failed to get their orders in in time in order to supply. The oh shit! October. So all of their October what. Which hurting them financially too, because all of the Oktoberfest beer that they had going to it, like got here today. Oh, after. No. so there was uh there was more plenty of Bud Light, Miller Light, and all that yeah. stuff. But the Marzins, you know, the different ones like the uh, Polaner and the mm-hmm. Anger and all that stuff. Spot. I feel like they Spot. always kind of run out by the weekend though. Well, they ran out extra fast this yeah, weekend. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, in fact, I could tell you the beer sauce shop had fifteen Marzins on tap for their Oktoberfest, and so we didn't go. We thought about going. Uh, I worked the fucking home show Saturday, and that was boring. Actually, I'll come back to that in one of the things I brought to talk about. Uh, but uh, I worked at this, when I was talking to them. They said, "Yeah, we have fifteen, and we have multiple." He goes, "We might actually have enough Marsins to last this weekend," which the Oktoberfest can't say that. <laughs> and I was like, "Well, that's good for you guys." Yeah, no they, shit. They should hit social media with that. Yeah, and I, you know, when I sent the thing out about us having an episode, literally what I was going to do is go to the store and buy all different Oktoberfest beers I could find, and we were just going to rate the sons of bitches while yeah. talking about pretzels and bratwurst and shit. Oh, that would have been fun. I just, I had a... Uh, <coughs> You're fill of drinking. <laughs> and it, yeah. yeah, and I just didn't... I ended up drinking a shit ton of Bush Light that day, but whatever. So, what, did you do anything over the weekend there? No, Jeff? not really. We had an extra kid, and we're dealing with a stupid puppy. Hmm. Yeah, so. right. It's an adorable puppy. It is super it cute. Is. I keep seeing pictures of it. I'll trade you a uh, 90 pound Rottweiler for the week. I, I might do that actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the Rottweilers probably yeah. Yeah. You got but, a little more shit together than a puppy yeah, right now. 12 week old puppy. Oh, it's going yeah. through all your socks. Yes, socks, uh, kid ankles. Everything. Well, shoes. Uh, uh, did, so you uh, you didn't even get to do anything then? No, not really. Well, well. Way to, we, bring, way to bring a podcast to hey. a grinding halt. No, yep. just kidding. <laughs> I, I need those weekends every once oh, in a while. Oh, you have to. And nice. I haven't had one in forever. Yeah. Uh, this weekend, like I told you guys, in addition to Art Outside on Sunday, I, I got backed into going to the Thomas Rhett concert with Missy on Saturday. Cause I've, in the this pa- weekend? Yeah. Okay. In the because in the past, I've seen Thomas Redd at, at uh, CMA Fest and stuff, mm-hmm. and I actually kind of dig his music a little bit. Yeah, he's and not it, bad. it was supposed to be Kalen and Missy, but it's homecoming because of the and this is a del- the concert was postponed due to COVID. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Missy goes, uh, "Well, do you want to go?" And I'm like, "Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, sure. I'm not? going. Uh, yeah, I like music. Yeah, I do. Country music concerts aren't my favorite, but I'm sure we'll have fun. Me the and Missy will have nice. some. Yeah, she's just got a pretty good view there. Yeah." But uh, I did, speaking of concerts, though, the first thing I brought to talk about is I can't stress what a great time I had at the Harry Styles concert. <laughs> yeah. It, I was, like, a little jealous. It, I got to tell you what, and I put it down here. You and I made the comment about how, in the past, he seems to be going down the, like, the Mick Jagger route. Yeah. And being there... At the show, listening to 25,000 k- girls sing and scream and hang on every word and throw bras on the stage oh constantly. Constantly. <laughs> and then, like, he would be walking and doing a little shuffle while singing and sunglasses would fly up. And I shit you not, this smooth motherfucker wouldn't even break stride and just reach over, not even looking, and grab him and put him on <laughs> out of the air. I thought, that's why that guy's fucking Olivia Wilde yeah. right now. Because yeah. uh, it, it was... 
even before the show started, they played a uh, One Direction song. Like, mm-hmm. the, and the crowd went nuts. And then they, you know, and they, I was proud. They even played Bohemian Rhapsody right before they came out. Like, that's the song they play before they come out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all these girls were singing it. I was like, well, this is a, that's you know, cool. I enjoy this. Yeah. Uh, and he, uh, he, he's, you know, it wasn't like, it's what you want out of a good show. He talked constantly to mm-hmm. pe- the fans, the people. He had to run off stage and they kind of looped a, 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 you know, the, a song and he came back on and he goes, I apologize. I had to go take a pee. And I'm like, <laughs> who says take a pee? For yeah. And it wasn't like he was holding back on us cussing. Uh, but I did text Missy and I can say the other thing. And this is going to be one of those times where if I ever get in trouble, it's going to be this podcast is going to, even if I didn't do it, this pot, this, this clip from this podcast is going to keep me guilty mm-hmm. is sorry to be a dirty old man. And I can't tell the age range, but yeah. there was probably, like I said, 25,000 girls. And I'd say only about 5,000 bras. Nice. It was, and I don't know the age. Yeah, it's weird. And yeah. my daughter, my daughter certainly has this kind of punky skater girl style, and she, you know, she's been dressing more like a girl mm-hmm. of late, and I don't like it. But yep. still, but the way she was dressed compared to some of her contemporaries at this thing, she was basically a nun. Yeah. I saw those tit sling shirts, you know, where it's just like twisty yeah. P- yeah. over. I saw. Oh, I saw a girl in a black sheer shirt, shirt where the uh, embroidery was supposed to be covering the lady parts, but was not doing it. Or the oh, nipple didn't line up correctly. No, and I was you like, gotta adjust those every once in a while. I was blown away. Maybe use some tape. I was like, so, and, and I do know for a fact because there was some because eavesdropping on other conversations around me. Because what else did I have to do uh, while I was waiting in line, the merch line, for one hour? Mm. Before the show, one hour. Uh, I waited in the by comparison. I waited in the beer line for thirty five seconds when nice. I got inside. Uh, but well, there was a, there was a significant amount of girls around me were like sophomores in college, mm-hmm. juniors. I was like, sorry, right, so I feel less dirty. But yeah. I know I'm not so naive to think that there was a lot of high school girls there. Yeah, and. I was just glad I wore sunglasses because I didn't want to get caught slapped. I'm like, <laughs> but I couldn't help it. I yeah. couldn't help it. Yeah. But, but it was yeah it was it was like I mean honest to God it was just it was a five out of five there's just no way around it that yeah. concert that guy puts on a great show I don't think I've ever heard one of his songs Are you serious Yeah you don't know my, pretty good don't my know kids that, don't listen to you that. don't know that watermelon sugar that's on the radio Holy nope, shit uh, I mean he's got a lot of good and uh, here's the thing my, and Hayden asked me today she goes when you went to the concert with Harry or for Harry, with Kaylin did you sing the songs I go damn right yeah. I did she goes can't help but not she goes Kaylin said she wasn't sure I go oh she was busy crying. So <laughs> that's such a weird like uh. Missy says the same thing. I mean, I get it. Yeah. I guarantee that if I were to go in any event and ever meet Adam Horowitz or uh Mike Diamond, I might tear up if I see them. Yeah. But but that's meet them. Yeah. Uh just be adjacent to them. Yeah, but if I was in a or if I was at a concert where they were at and mm. they put a tribute to Adam Yalk up on the screen, that's I'd probably tear up. Too, yeah, though. But I, I mean, I just, I get being so passionate about something. When Michael Turner, the artist, died, yeah. I cried when I found out. Yeah. Now, I get that's different, but Kaylin just in, instantly tears. Like, yeah. she was so happy. I mean, it's cool, I guess, that they... You're, that, just, uh, you're just glad your kid loves something so yeah, much. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, that, I've just never had that, and it makes you wonder if maybe something's wrong with you. <laughs> well, no, no, because I've never been so happy at seeing something that I've cried. Yeah. Unless I was really stoned. And yeah. I don't remember it then, so. I think I've yeah. done it in a Marvel movie just when a character pops up or something. Uh, it was pretty hard almost not to tear up at Endgame when uh, yeah. he says, Cap, over your left, you yeah. know, on your left. And yeah. you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. No. I mean, I've teared up in movies and stuff, but never like uh, like seeing somebody or being at something. And you're like, yeah. this is oh, too much for me. Yeah. You know? yeah. At least not in a good way. Well, you're heartless. Yeah, that's that is true. <laughs> uh, that's not true too uh, either. I've I've seen you're a big softy when it counts. I am a big softy sometimes. Uh, what what do you got? I mean, that's I've got a couple more to talk about before we roll into like the throat to Missy. But anything big that you guys got to talk about right now? Oh, uh, not real massive. But I did. There was one thing I did forget. I spent all of last week going to cheerleading camp with Vera, and it mm. was it just solidified the fact that I'm a pretty good dad because that was awful. 
Yeah. Yep. Like every day for an hour and a half watching them dance to the same fucking Justin I'm, Timberlake song. I'm pretty I'm I'm very happy that you could be satiated of uh being a great dad by doing the absolute minimal. Yeah. Just <laughs> oh. so no, 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 no. I do other things too. Like uh like I'm the designated car guy on the street when all the kids are outside. I stand in the street while they run around and I may or may not throw balls at them as they run down the street. Mm. See if I can hit one of them. It's fun. It's good. I time. think that yeah. cancels out the good dad. No, no, need. It's a good time. Because if you hit them while they're running, they're gonna get street pizza. No, 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 no. You hit them in the head with a softer ball. It's fine. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, they're very easy to give a concussion to a kid. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> No, but uh, I went to this stupid uh, dancing, and Fear had a blast. It was a good time. They performed on Friday night at the football game. Uh, our school played in a, another local school, and we destroyed them. High school football is pretty fun to watch. It's been a long time since I've been to a it's game. It's a good time, man. Sports, you know, uh, sports ball. But all the kids nowadays, I guess, at our school, uh, all dress like country bumpkins, and it's fucking weird. No, it's certainly... Some schools. South has a little bit of that. You get North you, has a lot of yeah, it. Yeah, North. Yes, North, North does. North, you're getting a little more close to the country. I mean, North. we're still living in the suburbs, though. Yeah, but we're, we're I guess farm adjacent. No, we are. We do not believe in COVID in St. Charles County. Oh, we yeah, are yeah. not a. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it is a. Uh, yeah, there's there's a significant amount of redneckery going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. In. Well, and that goes with the mullets too. Yeah. yeah. Oh God, they're awful. Yeah. But like we go to the gate, like Jeremiah's games and stuff, and Harry speaking of the hitting him in the ball, head with the ball, he has this one soft ball, and he likes for me to, he likes to run away and then have me whip it at his head, <laughs> and if it hits him, he goes. <laughs> That's not. <laughs> by the way, so so just so you know, that's not something that he loves because it just sounds fun. That's something you've conditioned him yeah. to oh, yeah. be a fun. Yeah, he game. thinks it's a good time. Yeah, yeah. yeah dad likes this game, so yeah. I like this game. That's yeah, what he's, he's three. Yeah. He doesn't know any better, and uh, it doesn't hurt. But it is a great time, and it just makes me feel good. Like he was annoying earlier, and so I get to hit him in the head with this ball. <laughs> I'm not a great parent. Yeah. Well, you got your moments. Yeah. yeah. You know, everybody. Can't win them all. What, what you yeah. got? Um, did you see the Sandman trailer? So, also, you know. It's more of a teaser. Yeah. What a, it was a great day uh, in spite of a very dumb name for Netflix. Uh, Tudum? What was the name of it? The event was... You didn't see it? This was a virtual event. Yeah. It was their uh, uh, celebration day. Yeah. Or their, you know, oh, upfront. really? Yeah. Disney just did one not too long ago. Yeah. Like so Disney this was, Plus day or this was yeah. Netflix's, they're going to start, they're, they had, you know, brought all the important people and all the press in, and this is all the stuff that's coming out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, Rake is back. They showed for Extraction 2. Yeah. They pre- oh, really? Yeah. He's. They did a trailer. And I he, saw. He was, he's, he's sitting at the bottom of the river and his eyes open. Oh, cool. And it says Rake is back. Oh, nice! Because he was doing some Instagram thing where he's like, "I gotta like slim down for that character because he bulked up so big and yeah. did all those steroids for the Hulk." Also, uh, best name for an action guy in the, it, it, Rake. I didn't even yeah. know that was his name until I saw the hashtag Rake gets back. I didn't know that either. Yeah. That's a pretty good movie, did. though. Oh, I was, loved it. Did you like Extraction? I haven't seen it. It's been oh, it's been in the queue to watch, God, and we haven't a, gotten to it. That is a good hour and a half. Yeah, of fun. It's fun. Yeah. Um, so they had that, but to yeah. your point, they finally debuted some a teaser and some clips from Sandman, Neil Gaiman's uh, classic. His his uh, what's the word I'm looking for? His uh, it's his it's his you know. Uh, Is it like pen something or another? No, pen. penultimate's one before the ultimate. Yeah, you're right. You're right, uh, you're right. But but it is Opus. Yeah. It's Opus Maximus. Uh, Opus Magnus or whatever yeah. it's called. Yeah, something and, like that. Yeah, but uh, I I'm very excited about that. Also very. Weary yeah. of a very complex story. Yes. And going to be very hard to get to visuals. Yeah. But I'm excited. Did you see anything else from it? No, I haven't. Just that like opening clip of the, the show. Where they, where they bring them in? Well, it, what, the, from Tudum. Or and I could be wrong, but, but the, the name of this event for Netflix was T-U-D-D-U-M. I don't even know what hmm. that means. But so they showed that. Yeah. They showed us a teaser of Stranger Things season four, the final season. Yeah. In a haunted house. Mm-hmm. They showed us. What else did they show us? Um, more footage from the uh, Ryan Reynolds rock. Uh, uh, red yeah, something. Red Gal letter. Uh, or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Did you, Gadot, yeah, yeah. Uh, they showed a lot of cool stuff. Did you see that uh, trailer for that Arcana? Yeah, that was just say a very cool cartoon. Look, but it, apparently it's a League of Legends thing, which is a game that I've never played. Yeah, so it is a character from one of the char- uh, the archetype characters from League of Legends or the mm-hmm. Arcana uh, 
uh, characters from League of Legends, and it's the story based around that character. Yeah, and it's yeah. a uh, it's an animated movie, but it looks freaking <laughs> it looks ridiculous. really good. It looks really good. And then they showed the Cowboy Bebop, the yeah. opening. Yeah. Set, man, I mean, for guys like me and Dwayne, um, that's I mean, that's nerd heaven. Bender, I know you said you tried watching it, but you really need to give it a go. I, I yeah, I do. Uh, do you? How do you feel about this? Do you think they're going to pull it off, or do you think it's going to be too much? I think Jonathan Chow can pull it off. Cho, Cho. Whatever. I think it looks amazing, um, which is part one because they've got yeah. the kind of the jazzy noir look to yeah. it. I think if they set the mood with the music, I think they certainly are showing us with the the opening segment, the opening credits, that they're willing to embrace it. Uh, there, there's some stuff that I, I really want to, I can't wait to see. They've removed certain characters that are pretty big to the show, um, well, part of the team. But I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt because you do have to make it work for TV. Mm, yeah. and, um, and you're only going to get guaranteed one season. And, I, and, and if they keep it stylish like that and the fight scenes are pretty like... Kind of kill Billish, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, like when it goes to black and white and, or, and things like that. Uh, I, I'm excited. I'm super excited. I and I think that yes, I think that he's going to knock it out of the park the way he looks right now. Yeah, it might yeah. make him an action star. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I think uh, he he doesn't. He's a great actor. He's just never like uh, him and Kyle Penn both. The yeah. the, the, the who knew the the Harold and Kumar guys were <laughs> yeah. actually had their chops? And by the way, Kyle Penn left acting yeah, to go work, work on Obama. Obama's staff because yeah. he's that smart. Yeah, and he had a show not too long ago. It failed miserably, but uh... oh, that's right. Well, and he was on House for a long time. Yeah, yeah he it's, was. And when he decided, also a pretty sad scene. Uh, I love me and Missy loved House. They wrote him off by suicide when yeah. he went mm. to go work for Obama's staff. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. What if you get a call on that? Like, write me off as I killed myself, you know? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Well, and, and I think, you know, and then in the whole episode at the end of it, suicide prevention. Yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> um, I think I want to segue into one more TV-related or comic booky thing before we start talking about uh, uh, 16 being a serious number, because we have to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, I got I got two things, too, also. Uh, well, then, I want to bring up, I don't know if you guys saw, but Anthony Mackie was... They attempted to cancel him very hard yes. for a full day. No, I didn't see this at all. Proving that uh, uh, former Falcon, current black Captain America is impervious to cancellation. And mm-hmm. by the way, what he said and why they wanted to cancel him proves that there is way too much sensitivity and way too much bullshit with the woke left yeah. that it makes me sick. What he said, Bender, so you're not aware of it, if since you're not aware of it, mm-hmm. is like... Every time this happens in Marvel, it seems, is be the ones that most likely get this thrown at them, or most often get this thrown at them. People are like, you know, uh, the internet has fallen in love with the story, or, or at least got some momentum behind the story. Like, maybe Bucky and, and Falcon are going to be gay. Maybe they're, they, oh, they're very that, close. Yeah, that fanfic shit. So he came out, and he basically... I'm going to summarize what he said. I'm not going to say it word for word, but mm-hmm. what he said was... Sometimes it's very hard to tell a story of two good guy friends in this day and age because people want to try to make them gay. And he says, you shouldn't use something like homosexuality, which is a beautiful thing on its own, to politicize or weaponize it in a TV show. We should just be able to have male relationships without a problem and they don't have to be gay. So what did the far left, woke left... Anthony Mackie goes off on homophobic rant. Cancel him. <laughs> remove him. He hates gay people. He called it beautiful in the statement, in yeah. the interview. I mean, But it went hard. They went good 24, 48 hours was ago. Was it actually after. the far left, or was it like right-wing bad? Because uh, they do that shit with Chris Evans all the time, so, too, and it's usually Chris bad Pratt. at Chris, Chris Pratt. Pratt. Well, no, oh, that, no, no, that is the woke left, because uh, the yeah. left hates Chris Pratt because he's... didn't come. He did not support Biden. He doesn't like Biden. Yeah. Yeah, he's a conservative... Christian, but he guy. didn't say he liked Trump either. Asshole. But he didn't say he liked Biden. Yeah, so. but it, so the left always does go after him. But every once in a while, something will pop up with Chris Evans, and it's like that's not actually what I said, or this or that. You know, like yeah. uh, and then dick he, pic or whatever. Say, came then he, out. then yeah. he releases a, a, a dick pic, and people yeah. are like, "I'll be damn Captain America." <laughs> is not the star of the show. <laughs> uh, uh, I hundred percent agree because, like, at the same time. They always do this stuff where, like, uh, showing vulnerable males uh, 
we need to like embrace male vulnerability more often and stuff, and maybe we'll have less angry, violent men in this world. And That's- I'm like, you're showing a nice friend, like a beautiful friendship of two guys who like started out. And they just rip each other, and they're actual real friends, and you're trying to turn it into something else, and you're saying that it you can't have that. Like, it's either got to be A or B, and there's a big gray area that you could just... It's got, it doesn't have to be black or white, you know? And that's basically what he's getting at, I guess. Yeah, no, yeah, he, he didn't say a bad thing. Yeah, no. period. And they tried to turn it, and you're right, it... So I well you're not I don't think you are right but I think it's certainly possible I I think uh uh, uh what's it called um, uh something provocateur which is a real thing that the government has used throughout yeah. history um but you could also say that I guess the right could start that in guise of being the woke left just to get steam and cause yeah, 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 yeah. uh the same way the woke left could do the same thing exactly. Uh, but, well, they uh, they accuse each other of it all the time, like uh, the insurrectionist people. They, they were said like, Antifa those were left up, wing like, actors. Blah, blah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's a, it's stupid. No, Nobody no, the whole I can't remember the name of it, but the whole provocateur thing is something that the government has acknowledged using Ooh, in the this past. Is not great. They started in the '60s or '70s with riots, and what they would do is they would put people in yeah. to incite it more, which would mm-hmm. allow them to declare martial law and take yeah. control of a situation. Yeah. That's a real thing. Yeah, no, no, I, and absolutely. That's, that, I'm not saying that I stand behind it, but I certainly understand the government tactic. It's a smart tactic. Well, they, it's not dirty, yeah. and we shouldn't do it, but it's, it, you know, we're not in wartime, but in war, smart Well, things. they actually yeah. did that with the, uh, the, do you remember back uh, early 2020 or mid-2020, where those guys were going to capture the governor of michigan or yeah, whatever yeah yeah they so the new york times actually released the whole story on the fact that they were kind of it was three brothers and they were just bullshitting on the internet back and forth with one another and an fbi agent moved in and like he kind of coerced him into it more the way the story's written is like they talked about it but this guy really got the ball rolling on it yeah. and then was like ha no i got you you know, and they were yeah. like, "Whoa, whoa, man! You, you got, you yeah. gave us all the ideas." Yeah, and- yeah. The Turbs agent yeah. provocateur. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, it's crazy. It's weird stuff. But it's what I loved about the story is one, um, or what I, you know, obviously the first notes about the story is like, "Come on, guys! Fine. I mean, don't quit fucking searching for a cause. Yeah. You know, quit making mountains out of molehills." But two, uh, in, especially knowing that you're in the world of Disney, which is you got to watch your P's and Q's, ask Gina Carano. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anthony Mackie's just like, uh, you know, he's feeling like a pimp, so he just brushed his shoulders off. Yeah. And yeah. He just, he ran. He's like, well, he already got paid. He's already, oh, he's, he's, like, he's like, I'm already back as Captain America. And Disney's like, oh, yeah, we're not getting rid of him. He's yeah. coming back. <laughs> you know. So on that same vein, they kind of came out with a, uh, I guess they were trying to do the same thing to um, Daniel Craig a little bit because they, Somebody asked him about the gotcha question of, like, should the next James Bond be a woman? And he very plainly said, no, not that she can't be a woman, but James Bond is a man and always has been a man. Why not just make an equally awesome agent that is a woman Which and Netflix follow her Netflix is around? trying its best to do with yeah. Kate. With, uh, Which I've got, I'm about halfway those. through Kate. But the uh, the search for the next James Bond is on. and uh, I just Like Donkey wanted, Kong? Yeah, I just want to know what you guys are thinking. They still... They're not going with Hydra's Alba. According to the internet, he's still in the running, but he says no. But he's 49. I think it's, it's, it's age, fucking old. It's age why yeah. he's not. I did see a fun story about Daniel Craig accidentally breaking Dave Batista's nose. Yeah, and ran and away. And he ran away. <laughs> he said he accidentally punched him, and when he did, he ran away. And he said Dave Batista just reset his own nose and yeah. went back to filming the scene. I bet. That's yeah. funny. Uh, says he's a big sweetheart. Yeah. Said Dave Batista's maybe the nicest guy he's ever worked with. And um, so then after that, it's Tom Hardy is the number one odds on favorite. I don't love it, but I didn't. I love Tom Hardy. Yeah. I love Tom Hardy. I just he just seems like too. He he plays a gr- so Daniel to Craig. Man. Yeah. Well, yeah. so Daniel Craig was the grittiest Bond we've seen so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Tom Hardy is extra gritty. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's played really. You know, I don't know. I I I, I kind of would like them to go with you know an unknown or or, or certainly someone that's. Got some steam behind him, but it hasn't really made that big step to so, start him. So then the next guy they're saying is by this, the way, uh, Daniel Craig was not a big name. When no, he took no not at all. all. And he also wasn't a big dude until he, they got Casino Royale. Yeah, but uh, the next name was uh, Re- Reggie Jean Page, which is the guy. Oh, from, Reggie. Uh, he's the guy from that. Uh, uh, 
I'm blanking on it now. Yeah. Um, oh, we here. Blanking on it. God damn it. What's that? Bridgerton. Bridgerton. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. like a mixed dude. Uh, he was up there. And then. Oh, Henry, he's the like. He, the sex symbol or whatever yeah, in that like, show. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm, on, I'm on board. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah, the look. Yeah. You know, maybe we're maybe the Brits aren't quite ready for a full black bond, so let's take it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah, ease little, into little it. Middle ground. <laughs> and then uh, the last one was apparently Henry Cavill was in the running when Daniel Craig got it, but he was too young, and now everybody wants him, but he's too fucking big. Uh, yeah, and there is a lot of steam behind him returning to Superman. Yeah. Is there? Yeah. Okay. And so, in which... Henry Cavill deserves a shot at a good Superman. Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He looks the part. He does. He's, and he's a good actor. Yeah. He's yeah yeah yeah. He's solid. Yeah. Perfect solid. And I'll I'll honestly tell you the Superman parts of those movies weren't a problem. No. Yeah. No, no. 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 Yeah. But uh, the other thing I wanted to ask about this is you know uh, Casino Royale was honestly I I think it's the best James Bond. Film. Oh, it's the hands rest down. of them are well. Okay. Let me rephrase that. It is my favorite. But Skyfall's really goddamn good. It, uh, it's really good. It is good, but it's almost like a... Uh, it's a better film than a Bond movie, I you're think. You're right. It is a very good film, but it's like a... There's a lot of parenting issues in there and yeah. stuff. And it's not that it's bad. Well, it's, that's what was different about it. It yeah. gave us the most fleshed out Bond we've ever seen. But yeah. Casino Royale is just a fucking it's, great movie. Every time you think Casino Royale is going to end, it goes on for another 15 minutes and you're like, I'm not mad about it. Yeah, like, yeah, most done movies, it's not like, bad boys too. Yeah, yeah, most movies are like, just fucking end where you had the high note. Yeah. But no. Uh, and I, I just rewatched Quantum of Solace not too long ago and it's a better movie than... I didn't like that one. But I've it's only a little better. seen if it a couple times. It, it's better... If you take the like, it's just it's impossible. You just to can't hold up follow the, Casino Royale yeah, with exactly. that. You could have Skyfall, but not Quantum yeah, Solace. Yeah. yeah. So then with this next one, because you know they're going to put another one out in like two years or whatever. I <laughs> I bet I bet we're going to look at five years before the next one you comes think? out because we're going to have to find the Bond. Yeah. And then they're going to have to go on a publicity tour with yeah. that, and then they'll make the. I would like to it. see him go back in time a little bit though, like maybe do like a vintage Bond for like three or four movies and then jump around. I don't know, like do like a 60s or something, James Bond. Like style. House of Pains like jump a, around? Sean. Yeah. <laughs> or Criss Crosses? Yeah, exactly. Because this okay. one was a little more grounded and they didn't do any of like the fun gadgets. And like with the King's but this, success. But this next one though is doing gadgets. Yeah, he did the gadgets with the gun car before, but not But they, yeah, they said ridiculous. they're bringing more gadgets into it. They've Which been I'm slowly with, yeah. doing that. Q mm-hmm. has been slowly de- mm-hmm. de- developing. He's evolving over through. Because this is... This this story is Daniel Craig's Bond is a Bond that just got promoted to double O. Yeah. Yeah. In Casino Royale. So mm-hmm. we're seeing yeah, it's like the, the origin evolution. story. Yeah. 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 And it if anything, uh James or this James Bond, Daniel Craig in particular, gave us one of the funniest episodes of The Office in the parkour episode. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that. Where they you you run even Hayden you know when Hayden's uh-huh. little parkour thing it was from office oh, okay. they ran around the office parkouring yeah. and Jim <laughs> Jim goes so uh, apparently a new craze it's he goes you could see it in the new Bond film oh, okay uh, you know, and so that's what they're doing. except Daniel Craig didn't do it he just yeah. ran through walls yeah but it was awesome <laughs> it was awesome what do you got Jay uh, so I caught the first half of season three of Dark Side of the Ring. It's on Hulu now. Oh yeah, I'm uh, uh, I'm watching the second half right now. Are you? Uh, yeah. So the second half started with um, the plane ride from hell. Yes. Which paints a bad picture for pro wrestling. Yes. And they really struggled with doing that, and it did not help Flair out. Yeah. It did not help Tommy Dreamer out. He no. got suspended. And then this last episode has gotten John Cena a lot of heat and Flair again. Yeah. Because it's the Chris Canyon episode, who was a great wrestler. Yeah. Chris Canyon, John, for you since you don't know, mm-hmm. he was he was the innovator of offense. He was really he pioneered a style that the indie wrestling and guys today use. Um, but he also was wrestling with bipolar disorder and mm-hmm. he was a he was a closet homosexual, and he thought that if he came out, Just pack all that in, there. he would be yeah. fi- he would be fired. So he yeah. kept it to himself, and only one guy really knew. And then in the WWE, even Chris Jericho still goes so far on that episode and says, uh, "Yeah, the way they squashed him in that Undertaker match where he came out saying Boy George, yeah. that was them knowing and sending a message." Yeah. Um, and he ended up eventually. Spoiler alert, people! He committed suicide. Shocking. Um, but uh, yeah, man, it, it very sad. Especially you'll love that episode because 
Young Bucks were best friends with him. Yeah. Uh, he mentored them. He taught uh, old, uh, uh, Brian Cage. Yeah. Um, he just, people loved him. Yeah. He just was, and even his best friend on there, the sinister minister, his sidekick, his manager, mm-hmm. he loved him. Canyon beat the shit out of him all the time. Yeah. Because he couldn't cope. Yeah. But anyways, what were you going to say about this first half? The, the Brian Gage one was, or uh, Nick Nick Gage. Gage, yeah, yeah. That was, was a, crazy. It's it's good, but I can't say whether it was one of the best episodes, but no. it certainly was the more interesting ones, you know? Like, I forgot he went to jail for robbing a bank. For a while. Yeah. And then got out, it was more popular yeah. than when he went in. <laughs> Um, like this he's is a, a real round the bank. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a this is a guy, by the way, because he drugs. He yeah. said because drugs, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And this is a guy that is known for taking pizza cutters to people's tongues. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Like he almost killed Dar- David Arquette. Jesus Christ! Oh, no. that's the guy who David yeah. Arquette yes. fought. Yeah, yeah. David Arquette did that match and came out and was like, never again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's the king of the death match. Yeah, he's okay. the, yeah he and even more so than Foley and uh, and and uh, Funk, yeah. Terry Funk, but. Uh, he, it, it, but I'll tell you this. I'll say this. He made his television debut essentially in AEW, mm-hmm. uh, which was a, it was a hardcore match. But it was a watered down one. Yeah. Um, and then he's working a program with, uh, like we talked about, former Zack Ryder. What do they call him now? Matt Cardona. Matt Cardona. Um, something interesting and captivating about Cage. Yeah. Or Gage or whatever it yeah. is. Yeah. Gage. Uh, he's. He, there's a reason he's got a following. Yeah. And I, yeah, I think it's cool. I can't wait for you to watch the plane ride from oh, hell. I, I can't wait to see that one. So, so John Cena. So the reason the the mm-hmm. plane ride from hell is a very famous story to where there was a delayed flight of a private charter jet with unlimited bar, and the wrestlers get house and Ric Flair takes his Shocking. dick out and does the helicopter. At a, <laughs> according to some people, he makes the flight attendant touch it, oh. and he gets in trouble for that. He's in trouble in the media for that, and then he's come out and denied it. Um, it Brock Lesnar tried throwing Kurt Henning through the door while they were flying. A um, <laughs> lot of stuff goes on. They cut off the hair of a wrestler or of a of a long time long haired man. Or he's Michael P. S. Hayes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. While he's passed out, they slip Mickey's to each other while they're. I mean, this it was the ultimate rip, yeah. and it turned into a nightmare for the staff and for everyone. Um, so that's a good How one. How long yeah. was this flight? They were delayed for six hours, and it was a flight from uh, Britain, Great Britain, to the United States. Wait, so, so they were doing this on the tarmac? Just they hanging started, out? yeah, on the tarmac, <laughs> yeah. and then and like then, if you're the pilot, why take off? Why? And then they, well, the pilot didn't know what was going on oh. until they got in the air, and that's when things hit. <laughs> uh, and then that's when the uh, Mickey slid. <laughs> and then in the Canyon episode, Canyon certainly when he when when the WWE bought out WCW, and he was doing really good in WCW. They brought him in. They gave him the United States title and the tag title, which means they gave him some juice. Mm-hmm. We well, got injured, and while he was injured, when he came back, things kind of derailed because the NWO hit. Uh, or not the NWO. That was when he was in WC. But things kind of changed. And Cena was on the – and uh, Canyon was very big staple on the Howard Stern show. Mm-hmm. And he had said he was fired because he was gay. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't open, and they were just sending a message. Maybe there's some truth to it, maybe not. But Cena came on the Howard Stern show and said, when when Howard asked him about it, he goes, he was very tactful in the most you know Cena way. But he goes, you know, um, I think, you know, what what oh, that one looks cool. Um, it does look cool. But he goes, John Cena essentially what he said, and I'm, I don't know all the things he said, but then he ended with, you know, at the end of the day, Chris just wasn't that good. Mm-hmm. Which is not the case. He was very good. He was known as one of the best workers, but he buried him. And Cena's getting a lot of shit for that. Yeah. How long ago was that? Y- a few years ago. Yeah. 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 Well, Cena was making his bones, and if if uh, he was McMahon, being a company man. Yeah. Vince yeah. McMahon comes out and said, you know, that's like uh, when LeBron said, uh, you know, China. China's great or whatever. Yeah. Don't fuck with my money, and I'm the company man right now. Well, and then and then later, Kenyon came back on Howard Stern and and. Rick Flair called in, and he told it to to Kenyon's face, so to speak, over the phone that you know you you just didn't have it, you don't have it, but he did have it. It's yeah. all it's a counter. I mean, it was a it's a good episode. I can't wait for you to watch it. Yeah, yeah. looking forward to that. It's a great series. You might Missy enjoys them. Mm-hmm. It's just the bad story. And I mean, you know, obviously, the Chris Benoit was the one that put them on the map. Yeah, but it's so good that the wrestlers in real life in the, in their promos and stuff 
have been working quotes from the show. Yeah. And they're start they love it. They watch nice. it. Yeah. Like so, the Brian Pillman was really good. That was a good one. That was um, a very solid one. And then the the one when they went to Korea. They went to Korea in the mid nineties for a promotion and they like some of the guys were like threatened and they, they were scared they weren't gonna get out of Korea. Yeah. <laughs> it was Muhammad Ali and uh Antonio Anoki, which were Anoki's the Japanese version of Ali, only a wrestler. Mm-hmm. He had so much stroke in Korea, they put on the show. And the wrestler said it was one of the largest shows they've ever worked. People were forced to go watch the show. Yeah. Oh. And he, there's like is this 45, North or South Korea? North. It was North Korea. They went to North Korea? Yeah. There were 45,000 people there watching them. That's fucking they, insane. They said the first night, no one clapped or anything. They just sat there. Yeah, yeah I bet. And then the next night when Muhammad Ali came out, they got more into it. Ric Flair was on it. Yeah. It, it was weird. It's weird. They were very, and you know, like the food wasn't that great. Yeah. But and and Rick Steiner was like, "This food fucking sucks," and blah blah blah. And the guy goes, "Hey man, this is not uh, America. All these people that are serving us though haven't eaten in like months. Yeah. Let's just eat. Let's get the fuck out of here." <laughs> One guy called home to his wife and talked about what a shithole it was, and they came to his room. Like the phone cut off. Yeah. And they came to his room and like. You can't talk bad about the country. And he's like, you're listening to my calls? Yeah, of course and they then, are. And then, it's North Korea. Well, and he was going to get defiant, and he realized, I might disappear, and no yeah. one will know. Did, that, might, I gotta, that is interesting. Like, I guess they were trying to do diplomatic ties with Korea at that point or it, something. It was, no, it was such it, a huge money grab yeah. for him. But, like, you can't do that shit now. Like, if no. you wanted to put on, like, an exhibition game, Dennis Rodman gets away with it a no. little bit. Well, so, maybe... But the WWE, once a year, has a contract, and they go over to Abu Dhabi, mm-hmm. yeah. and they do a show there, and the women have to wear it when the, they, they had one yeah, women's mat. But they also, the first one they did, some wrestlers didn't get home for like 13 days. Yeah. yeah. like that, w- You've got to toe the line in those countries, but also, we aren't actively in a cold war with Abu Dhabi. No, we are not, <laughs> but... Uh, but we we actively by doing this. They, it's not like I I don't think this is what the WWE is saying. They're saying oh payday. Yeah. yeah. But you are supporting a certain amount of repression to people and stuff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. By going there. Yeah. To top it all off, Two Cold Scorpio was going to yeah. stab one of the other wrestlers. He was going to kill a guy. They got in, they got, got into an altercation. Uh, it was one of the Road Warriors, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Road and, Warrior uh, Animal. Yeah, and he didn't have his... Oh, no, it was Hawk. It was, it was Hawk's Hawk, the yeah. wild one. And he didn't have his medicine for his bipolar. And so something happened between the two of them. They got in a fight. They had to separate them. Too Cold Scorpio goes back to his room and makes a shiv. Claim, <laughs> and if you listen, he claims that he was beating him up and he could have beat him up. But other wrestlers say that Hawk... It's one of those wrestler stories. Hawk knocked him out. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're just crazy. If you go home to make a shiv instead of just grabbing a knife, that's premeditated. There was no murder. knife. I know, yeah. but I mean, like, yeah. or something sharp around. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you go home and make it, you're premeditating yeah, yeah. murder. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but he, again, it was going to be in Korea, yeah. you know. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, I, I did I did mention, I teased this a while ago, and before we get into a throw it to Missy and just do everything else we, we brought, I do want to say... Uh, this is the final year of Mike Shannon, the broadcaster for St. Louis Cardinals. 50 years he's mm-hmm. been doing it. Yeah. It's a final year. They've done something he's never seen. They're winning 16 in a row. Yeah, They've won yeah. 16 in a row. Uh, I mentioned the home show that I had to work. I take my laptop and I hook it up to the TV that's supposed to be looping one of our informative videos when mm-hmm. I work them. Mm-hmm. And I put it on. We watch the Mizzou football game. Yeah. And then I put it on the Cardinal game. And I was screaming. In fact, I brought people into our aisle and that get because it was the day of the, the, the crazy play the double mm. play it was the crazy play the, the you know the second part of the de- the devil deal and it was the umpires trying to screw them out of it you know it was all no no that, no, that was it. sunday that was, that was yeah. sunday yeah so saturday though it was uh it was uh yeah just insanity yeah this is an insane yeah. thing we as cardinal fans have never seen this yeah yeah it was the three two five four two eight six double play yeah Harrison Your Baker was involved uh, in the double play. Uh, I mean, we're you know, and there's all this stuff. I mean, this was, this happened with the Blues. Yep. Um, in 2011, it certainly happened with the Cardinals again. They got healthy. They've they've got healthy now in the pitching right now. Yeah. Um, you know, three and a half weeks ago, the Cardinals had a less than one percent chance of making the playoffs, and as of today, there's a 99.9 percent chance. It doesn't. And I mean, it's not even also. 
it should be brought up that it's not just that they're win one sixteen in a row and they sweep all these teams. Yes, the Cubs are kind of a minor league team right now. But the Brewers certainly are in first place and yeah. they clinched and they swept them. The Padres at the time were the same record as the Cardinals and they were who they were battling and they swept them. In they fact, pretty much knocked them out. They ruined the Padres season. It's the mm-hmm. same thing with the Mets. Uh the uh the I mean, so much so that Machado and Tatis almost got in a fight in the dugout of the Cardinal at Bush Stadium. Yeah. <laughs> and then the Mets, they swept the Mets. And it's not even that they're sweeping teams. They're blowing them out for the most part. But what I'm happy about is they're winning also these ugly games. Yeah. Winning the 2-1 game. Yep. But they're – and, I mean, we have and, – and in the process, we're, we've seen something that we haven't seen in a while in St. Louis. We, you know, we've never seen 16 games in a row. But we saw 100 RBIs for Nolan Arenado. It's the first person since Matt Holiday in 2012. We have saw three guys with 30 home runs, and that's the first time since the MV3 yep. in 2004. And certainly – these guys are great. They're not MV3 no, they're great, not. but it's special. Mm-hmm. Uh, O'Neill, Arenado, and, and Paul Goldschmidt. And Paul Goldschmidt, and both and Goldschmidt and Arenado are quiet, quietly having the seasons that we're paying them for, yeah. the reasons we got them. They're both almost over at 300. They're both over, oh, well, uh, Goldschmidt's at 285, yeah. 30 home runs, can get to 100 RBIs. Uh, Arenado has 30 plus home runs and 100 RBIs. And by the way, He's the only guy in baseball that's done that this much. He's got yeah. six straight seasons, five or six. He's yeah. the only third baseman in history to do that. That's awesome. It's amazing what's going on right now. And, and then, then you have 38-year-old Adam Wainwright. 40. I don't, he's 40. He just he 40 turned 40 in, this 40 year. Yeah. Right. So Cy Young he could be in contention shot. for Cy Young. He, he's going to finish in the top five, yeah. maybe top three. Um, and, and then the other part of that 30 home runs, the young guy who's got a gold glove, and I didn't even think he deserved it when he won it. No. But now he's deserving everything he's getting. Tyler yeah. O'Neill. By the way, have you ever looked his dad up? Have we talked about that on the show? No. Tyler O'Neill's the greatest baseball player on the planet because I'm going to show you his dad. I showed this to everybody. You don't have to bring it up, Bender. So he made a career in the 80s being a action movie star and a stunt double for Arnold oh, that's and awesome. a black belt in martial arts. Uh, that's probably why O'Neill is so jacked. That's why he's so jacked because dad is jacked. I mean, that's his dad right there. Jeez. That's Tyler O'Neill's dad. Holy shit. Cool guy in baseball because yeah. of his dad. Hanging out with Arnold on a regular basis. Yeah. So anyway, we don't have to bring go too much into sports. We can certainly go into the rest of the topics we bring up. But this is, by any stretch of the imagination with any team, uh, historic. Yeah. I mean, there's only four better streaks in, ahead of them now. Yeah. Um, and I just posted, I, I certainly, and not to toot my own horn, but I certainly think one of the greatest things I thought of was they posted the Duncan Mm-hmm. Uh, in the yeah. 16. So I put, you know, not we got 16 in a row for Duncan, who passed away. Mm-hmm. Now let's do 18 in a row for Tavares, who died yeah. you know, a few years ago. So in yeah. his jersey number. I think it'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, anyway, well, let's, uh, after all that sports talk, unless, Jay, you got anything to add to it. No, I think you covered it. It's, again, we're getting healthy. Yeah. Flaherty gonna, is going to go into long relief, maybe. Yeah. Two innings with Jack Flaherty being able to throw everything he can. With Hicks coming back, too. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Is Hicks coming back? He uh, pitched yesterday at Memphis. <sighs> so then we're going to be able to bring the fire. But we got That means we'll have two 100-mile-an-hour throwers. And, yeah. Uh, that'd be awesome. Uh, I can't wait. I certainly know this. We're going to end up playing, by all accounts, we're going to play the Dodgers in the one-game playoff. Yeah. I don't think the Dodgers are looking forward to that. No, even with Scherzer. Um, so I'm excited about it, but. Enough of that bullshit. Let's throw this to Missy and let's see what we got to talk about. Bender, what do you got? Uh, I'm blanking again. Oh, my brain is not. Let's come back to Bender. Jay, what Sorry, do you got? Man. <laughs> so I found a crazy series on Netflix, uh, Squid Game. Okay, so. Oh, we, did you watch that? I'm we're three knock- episodes in. Well, we're knocking two things off of our two lists, uh, one item on two lists off because Squid Games. Uh, here's the thing I am addicted to Korean TV now. Yeah. And I have I finished Squid Games today when yeah. I got back home from work. Uh, it does not disappoint. Yeah, I can't wait for season two. How many episodes is it? Nine. Okay. Between this and I don't know which one. I, I think I like this one better than Alice in Borderland. But you yeah. certainly got to go back and watch Alice in Borderland. And Japanese and Korean and certainly Asian influence shows do this. They'll, you'll get there's like a whole culture of future sport show games. You know, like yeah. that are going on in Korea mm-hmm. right now. And they're all fucking great. And you gotta watch it. Okay. 
So, so I was just expecting to like to see the games, but there's a whole story drawn out about it. Oh, it too. gets it gets deeper. Yeah, it gets there's there's two real plots going on. One is the police officer trying to infiltrate and find his brother. Yeah, and two is the main character who you flash back to some of his life, and then as he befriends more mm-hmm. people in the game, you learn about them. And it's both kind of like Hunger Games, right? But like, but really bloodier. Yeah, and, and volunteer. And you volunteer okay. this. You sign well, your you also so, volunteered that Katniss volunteered. Well, well yeah, yeah. <laughs> these are all people that are in debt in their oh, work. Okay. They're trying to get their debt paid off okay. by doing these ridiculous games. So, like, the first one is uh, Red Light, Green Light. And if you're moving, they shoot you. Snipers <laughs> take you. <laughs> There's that. Did you see this first so, guy take this, off? This, and he stops, but he kind of falls forward a little bit. And then you just hear... Boom. And this is not follow. this is not a spoiler oh, alert for for Jay because certainly these these are just parts of the episode but not the main story. So there's red light, green light. Uh, the second I, I can't remember what the second game they play is, but there's one where they have where they have to cut the the sugar. Oh yeah, you have to. They get they get like a little thin cr- cookie cracker style cookie with a mm-hmm. shape in it, and they have they're given a a uh, paper clip, and they have to cut the shape out without breaking it. If you break it, boom, they shoot you in the head. Jesus. Uh, there's uh the net there's tug of war, and you, they, and they drag you off even while you're dangling. The guillotine comes down and chops it. Um, there's one good episode and, uh, that you get ten marbles, and it's like in a little neighborhood uh, to make it look like you're a kid growing up in your neighborhood, and you have to play a game with your uh, a partner, and you bet your you can bet one or all, and when you run out of marbles, there's a person waiting there to pull the gun out and just shoot you in the head. Uh, it's uh, and, then, and then that's not all. There's more, and then it comes down to the Squid Game. Yeah. Uh, but it is uh, which is a Korean. It, I don't even understand what it is. They kind of explain it in the first. They episode, don't do a good job. Does, yeah. It doesn't translate, yeah. and then they explain it again in the final episode. It does not translate. So uh, the way the main character gets into it is he has he's like in debt. And he's got uh, like uh, mob guys after him, and so he's gambling debt, yeah, and and just also financial debt. He, yeah. tra- he went to gambling to try to get yeah, out of it and got it, yeah. worse. So he's like in a train station. This guy goes, "I will bet you all this money on this paper game where you have they like squares. It, and you it looks try to like flip the other ones over by slamming them up. It looks too. like an envelope like a pog yeah. type thing. Kind yeah, of, yeah. kind of like it. And then so he he does it the first time, loses. And the guy's like, well. I will smack you, and it'll eliminate so much money. Yeah, he goes. I'll take a. I'll started. take a hundred thousand off if you let me slap you as hard as I can. So, so he plays a long time. Yeah, they just it's just a montage of him getting slapped for a long time, and so, then he wins one. So the only spoiler I'll give you is the final episode and the final game. Yeah, is done before the episode's halfway over. Yeah, in the final one. And then you have all the. It's not even an epilogue. It just sets up season two. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, it's. I gotta tell you, I Hayden fin- shotgunned it. Yeah. She goes, if it got too bloody, I just covered my eyes. But dude, it's fucking great. It is. It's great. Yeah, yeah. I watched uh, parts of Kate. I'm almost through it. It's pretty good. But I, every one of those movies is just so a it's the same John formula. Wayne. Yeah, it's the same formula. I haven't watched Kate yet, so I'm gonna give it a chance. Exactly. Uh, they do a pretty good job with the violence in it. Um, I, I've got to work from home day tomorrow, so I'll probably. Put it in there. I haven't finished it, but it, it's decent. Uh, did you guys watch Star Wars Visions? I have not, although I hear some good reviews of it. So I've watched the first two episodes. I heard a good review on the one episode in particular. The very first episode, The Duel, is yeah. to me the strongest Is that with the twins? No, no that that's is... That's the one that's got the great review. Yeah. The... And that one's okay. That one's actually called The Twins. Oh. Yeah. It's uh, Neil Patrick Harris and uh, Allison Brie. Alice... Yeah, they look a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's their voices, I know. Yes. Yeah. So but, the, um, the first ahead. one is like a samurai story. Yeah, yeah. It's and very it's much. really cool. And they've actually turned it into a book. Did they really? Yeah. Because I... it's it's awesome. It's just about this uh, this wandering guy, and he comes into a town that where uh, uh, a him, Sith Lord, uh, him and his droid sidekick. Yes, yeah, droid sidekick wander into a town that these uh, uh, hey, uh what's a the guy, the they're not Sith lords. They're the uh, starts with an E. Uh, the Inquisitor. Inquisitor, yeah, an Inquisitor. I think that's an I. Yeah, actually, it is. It, it is an I. You're right. <laughs> uh, the I, the Inquisitors, uh, coming to town and they're taking over and robbing these people. And uh, he comes in and helps them out a little bit. And uh, the the turn, the reveal at the end is pretty solid, but the battle is just spectacular. Yeah, like uh, she pulls out this 
ridiculous lightsaber that's got like nine blades on it, just oh, spinning just... it like a fan. And you're like, that's stupid. And then like 12 seconds later, you're like, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it really works. But then some of them are just a little... I'm not a huge anime fan, uh, so I don't get into a lot of I am of it. sometimes. In fact, over my life, I've watched a lot of anime movies, uh, uh, Mitsuyaku uh, mm-hmm. for one, uh, but I don't like it enough to where I care to see a lot of you know uh, the our, our shows yeah. done yeah. that way. Um, I certainly, I can tell you for a fact, I have not liked really one of the Rick and Morty anime things okay. they've done, the shorts they do, mm-hmm. but um, I like my Rick and Morty the way it is, uh, but yeah, I, I still want to see some of these. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, the twins episode. So the second episode is uh, Tatooine Rhapsody. It's pretty fun. It's just a real light, yeah, yeah, uh, punk rock one. But the twins episode is pretty good. It's basically what if Luke and Leia were evil. Yeah, you have to take in uh, a lot of grain of salt. It's like there's a massive battle where they're fighting each other outside of space. Uh, Star destroyers. Yeah, like, no helmets or anything. They're basically the two most powerful. Uh, 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 force wielders ever, and it's insane. That's but it's pretty I, cool. Leia's, Leia's done it in canon, so yeah, uh, not like this. <laughs> but it's pretty and that's wild. Yeah. They, and that's what uh, Japanese and uh, do. Yeah. They make you know yeah. they make over the top powers. Uh, but you did just say something right there that I think we should segue into. Uh, you said, "What if they were evil?" Let's talk about what if. Yeah, we got one more episode, right? Two, or is it two more? Yeah, two more. Is, yeah. yeah. And we've but in the next episode we have a uh, uh, bad guy vision yeah. with the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. Uh, Are what, we getting that? Because we didn't like they're not leading into every episode. It's the poster for the next episode. That oh, is, is it? Okay. Yeah. Um, that'll be the first time that they've actually led into an episode with the end of the the previous one. Yeah. Well, they, I, they, I know they showed it. They've as been a laying poster. groundwork for yeah. things. Is what yeah, like doing. they laid groundwork for a lot of stuff. But like Evil Vision, he's got all the infinity infinity stones in his head, but also. Evil Thanos had all the infinity or well, dead Thanos, zombie, zombie, zombie Thanos. Thanos yeah. yeah. Um. So what do we what do we think on the last uh, the uh, the that what, was fine. I yeah. mean, it, it, it was a nice change of pace from the other yeah. ones because those were starting to get really really dark. dark. Yeah. And the, and so here was my problem with the last episode. The other ones were really dark. This one was lighthearted. Yeah. Nice change of pace. Mm-hmm. But then it ended really dark. Yeah. yeah. Like it's yeah. like and you know what if comic books have never been like. Over the top happy, yeah. Uh, but still, this is uh, you know it's really dark. Uh, and I do, I do, I do. I would, if I were a betting man, I would wager. I do believe that we now know the villain from Far From Home or, or whatever the next one is, uh, Homecoming or what's the next one? Uh, no way home. No way home. No way home. No way home. I think it's a dark uh, uh, Doctor Strange. I think we get to see that Doctor Strange because if you watch that trailer, he's not acting like normal Doctor Strange in that trailer. Oh yeah, I think we're that's the villain we're getting. I think it is, and that's all I'm okay with that. I think yeah. that's a good way of bringing it out. You yeah, know? Uh, people argue that, but then a lot of people argue that you know that is Doctor Strange's character is to be the smartest man in the room and think that he can pull off a impossible uh, spell that it will end up well, fucking no, everything no. up and have, then he's got to fix it. I have no problem that being the case, but I think what he does is he bring it brings that the other Doctor Strange which swaps out with him. Yeah. And because he just the way his mannerisms and stuff change, and mm-hmm. Benedict Cumberbatch is a good enough actor to pull that off. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I'm down with it. Uh, what was I about to say? You you brought something up, and I thought, well, speaking of, um, what were we talking about before? What if Star Wars Visions? Oh no no no! Uh, sp- uh, keep it on Spider Man for a moment. Are you getting sad that uh, your boy's run's coming to an end? No, because Nick Spencer's run is like very all over the place, and I'm not <laughs> loving it. Now it's uh, did you see what the end is going to be? No, it's the actual in uh, what. Mephisto has been aiming at with the uh, one more day promise from the yeah. very beginning. He's yeah. Finally, his final card's being played and yeah, for Peter Parker's soul. Yeah, he's retconned a bunch of shit where Gwen Stacy and yeah. Norman Osborn yeah, had Osborne kids twins. and all that. He was uh, he's AI that uh, but there is a demonic Yeah, it's, yeah. It's crazy. It's insane. It's, yeah. it's wild. I Nick Spencer's stuff is fine. I I like Spider-Man like Grounded a little yeah. bit more. That's, Nonstop Spider Man's coming in or whatever. It's yeah, called, something yeah. like that. So I'm, I'm curious about that one. Like I really like that friendly neighborhood Spider Man that Tom Taylor did. They haven't said a, anything about that yet. 
But that's it's its oh, own it's, standalone uh, story uh, where he's just like in his neighborhood doing friendly spider, and I like that a little bit more than this like. Over the top, like we have the Daredevil to be like constantly beat down on, like yeah, yeah. which uh, that run's been awesome by the yeah, way, and that yeah, uh, Zardiskis, yeah, and he is actually about to take over something in D, or he's doing something in DC really big next, or know. is, I have to look it up, but, and I, I that then that's my biggest complaint with this Nick Spencer stuff is like it's just so dark, and Spider Man is supposed to be like, and I get it, his past is hard, and he's always the optimist and stuff, but. Like, it's just nonstop, like, beatdown after beatdown, and I'm really just honestly tired of, like, the Norman Osborn shit. Like, there's better... Like, just let him get to get back to being, like, a street-level, like, yeah. taking out this shocker and, like, like anybody else. Like, the Vulture and shit. You don't really see those guys much anymore. Yeah, I tried reading the Sin Eater stuff, and I just couldn't get into it. No, and, like, uh, I don't know who's doing Black Cat. I forget. I could look it up. But uh, there's a... a a uh, story arc running adjacent to this with Black Cat, and it's solid because it's a simple heist comic yeah. that's ran over like eighteen issues, I think now, and it's great. It's it's who that character is. She's like the anti-hero or whatever. She's stealing shit from Tony Stark and that all these other. That was great people. when she made yeah. that suit. Yeah, and it's fucking awesome, and it's a, just a lot of fun, and that's what Spider Man is supposed to be, and it's just not fun, and it drives me insane. So I've seen that Web of Spider-Man has come back. There's two issues of it on the Unlimited app. Oh. Have you heard no. about that at all? Okay. So, I, I don't know if it's any good. Well, I mean, at the end of Nick Spencer's arc, because uh, I've read ahead way past what I'm actually reading, but he's going to either die or walk away, and Ben Riley's coming back. It's going to be Spider-Man again. For a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, For a so. while until whatever, something uh, happens. Chip Zardisky is doing uh, Justice League Last Ride. Oh, okay. And then after he ends his Daredevil run, they're doing uh, uh, Devil's Reign, a, some miniseries event. Okay. And he's writing that with da- about Daredevil taking over. Doing- I just read the first trade of that. Oh, so it's I'm gonna so read the rest good. Of it. God, I, I, I did it. enjoy it. Uh, I'm digging this Once in Future King, though, by... Uh, Oh yeah, we we got to read that by yeah. uh, Kieran Gillian. Gillian. Kieran, yeah. Kieran Gillian. Oh, he's coming man. back. He's coming back to comics. Uh, we're gonna write something new. They just announced too. It's a Boom Studios comic. It's really good. Is it but it's, Conan? Is he returning to Conan? Might be. No, I can't remember. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. He's Is he coming. doing a Beowulf? Because he just threw Beowulf in the Once and Future King, and he's a fucking psychopath. Hmm. <laughs> Jay, good stuff. What you got? Um, I tried watching the first episode of Foundations. I What's did, that? got ripped, man. It got panned. It oh that Apple, Apple Plus show. Uh, yeah, I forgot that came out last week. Isaac Am- Asimov. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was going to be a hard one to pull off though, because it doesn't really have reoccurring characters throughout yeah, the book. Yeah. So I fell asleep. I, it, really? It got yeah. it. it the, the critics have ripped it. Um, I tell you what, I don't know what the critics say, but you do need to watch C. Yeah. It's a. It's gotten wilder and wilder in season two. Yeah. I do want to watch it. And by the way. I need to say this. There is an Emmy or Golden Globe or something that needs to be given to Jason Momoa because as this shows went on, he's gotten better and better, and it's his physical. It's like, so he's he got really tortured and beat down by old Batista. Yeah. But also his fighting style has evolved. He's like a badass fighter in season one, and it's okay, but they are all daredevils, keep in mind. But he now, he's like it fleshed it out. And he, I, I, he's got to be sore after a day of filming this because he's constantly hunched, hunched over and he taps the ground to try to draw his enemy in constantly mm-hmm. and he slides across the floor on his knees constantly. Well, even when he thinks he's about to jump into battle, he hits. he's the only one doing it in the show and I want to write the guys and say, everyone, take note from Momoa. If yeah. you were blind, this is the way you would fight. <laughs> yeah. He needs an Oscar. Yeah. I mean, or a Golden Globe. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing I brought, so we can hit on whatever you guys brought, is I read a very good story from the New Yorker today about uh, We're getting high class. What uh, <laughs> what the uh, New Yorker? It's uh, it was how, how did they phrase it? The uh, on a character in a show that goes out of its way to not uh, give us raw sex appeal, how romantically beautiful Ted Lasso's character is, but they do kind of say. Um, Ask someone, even the most ardent fans of the show, what it's about, and they'll always just tell you how it makes you feel. It's done something that the 
the plot is second to the way you feel watching it. And yeah. that's the first time it's ever happened in TV, they were saying. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't care if it was for it or against it, because the article paints a good, plays both sides of the argument for what's mm-hmm. great and what's not. Um, I just put in my notes, Ted Lasso, still great. Yeah, <laughs> still great. I don't care what anybody says. That reveal, I, I think I'm an episode or two behind again because of, you know, events. But, uh,. That reveal about his father oh, at the end of the like I cried. Yeah. just I cried. chokes you up, man. I cried on this last episode. I, I, yeah, I did a couple times. Yeah. But they didn't even like end it with just that. They, they ended it with Sam and yeah. uh, Rebecca getting together. Yeah, they they That's make name, right? you yeah. Yeah. yeah they make you cry because of a Rick roll. Yeah, in yeah. this last episode, a Rick rolling someone nice. kind of makes yeah. you cry. Nice. The, did you see the Coach Beard episode? Yeah, Coach that shit. Oh, that's the out. last one. I guess. That, yeah, yeah, so you're one behind. Yeah, you're one behind. That shit was wild. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" But I'm just, like, I still loved it, it's, and it still well, wraps it's, up pretty nicely. Although, I, I guess, like, didn't they just say that she was crazy like two episodes before? No, his. So the only problem I have with the character of all of evolution of all the characters they do is Coach is, is Jane Payne. She was crazy, and they kind of alluded that she was cheating on him. Yeah. yeah, early, and now she's great. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't maybe know. it's him, and like it maybe we'll get that. I tell you this, to the Emmy after parties, they they cleaned up those Emmy. pants. He yeah. wore those fucking yeah. pants. Nice. Yeah. I had fun with that episode, but like uh, I, I, think, I love I think, Coach Beard. Yeah, Homo posted on Twitter or whatever. Like, what the fuck was that? Uh, like, well, like that, a meme or whatever. And I was like, that yeah, was, I get it. <laughs> that wasn't originally supposed to be an episode. They did ten episodes, and then Apple wanted two more. So they did oh. the Christmas episode and that episode. Nice. Well, they knocked it out of the park with the Christmas episode yes, and yeah. the Coach Beard night out's fine. Yeah, it, I thought it, it reminded, was just fun and very weird. It reminded me of Mythic Quest, how they do those kind of side yeah. stories yeah, the, once a season. And they add to the show. Yeah. Uh, it, in fact, the whole bar scene with the with the pool and all that yeah. stuff yeah. and how he, how he smoothly manipulates yeah. his, Coach is awesome. Coach yes. Beard's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, my favorite Coach Beard moment is still him and uh, uh, Jamie Tart though, where they just stare at each other. And Jamie goes, oh, "What's he say?" He goes, uh, he, "He says something like, uh, you make it impo- you make it hard to talk to.' He goes, you make it hard to want to talk to you.' And he goes, "Then it's working." And yeah. Jamie just walks <laughs> off. Uh, what do you got, Jay? Uh, let's see. I watched The White Lotus on HBO Max. How was that? Which one it is was that? Interesting. It's about a hotel, I think in Hawaii. Everybody loves it. Yeah, like in like the West Coast. Oh, I know what you're talking yeah. about. It, it's uh, Steve Zahn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, all of, there are a lot of people. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Isn't it a, like a? I think the synopsis I got was it's a rich, terrible family who does terrible things, and terrible things happen to them. Well, no, it's not just focused on them. There's like five different people it focuses yeah. on. Mm-hmm. So it like their stories. Melissa connect. McCarthy. No, 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 that's, that's, a, no that's yeah, that's, that's a newer a one. one. Okay. Hulu. Um, but these they have individual stories that end up overlapping. Okay. And so like um, Alexandra Daddario. Oh yeah. Oh she's, my god, the hottest, one of the hottest girls in the yes. world. Yes, and she's on her honeymoon, hmm. and she kind of interacts with that family a little bit. Just being hot. Yeah. Yeah. Just ha- hanging out by. at the pool in the bikini. Yeah, so. just looking smoking hot. Yeah. That that alone was worth it. But I don't I don't know. It, is it good though? Is it worth hey. watching? Yeah, it was. Did you finish it? You yeah, said I did. You started. Okay. No, I How many episodes it. is it? I think it was only eight or nine. It's not many. Oh, okay. I think Are they it's got thirty a minutes or an hour. Already. They're about an hour. Okay. So I think I think it took me two days to get through. That ain't so working. bad. Yeah. Um, I do see something on your list, and we should mm-hmm. talk about it too. Are we? Certainly, the names are big. Are we excited about a, a animated Mario movie? Is this the Mario movie we've been waiting our whole lives for? Listen, Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong is. A plus casting. Chris Pratt as Mario. I don't get it. I don't get that. Like unless he's Who's Jack Black? He's He's Bowser. Oh yeah. yeah. And uh, Which Charlie Jackson. Day is Luigi. Oh speak- I don't know that one either. I don't know. I I, don't know. I, I can see him pulling that off. I'm gonna I I tell you this. We got a Mario movie when we were young, and when certainly when I was young. So Bender, I don't even know if you were born. I was uh, alive. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly the worst thing yeah. that ever existed. The I British Mario and the Mexican it. Luigi. Yeah, and uh, for two Italians, yeah. and then John Leguizamo as Bowser, or whatever. He was Luigi. Oh, he was Luigi. He, yeah. he was Luigi. Uh, Bowser um, was uh, 
It's. I always want to say Dustin. It's not Dustin Hoffman. It's. Uh, <sighs> it's. Is it Dennis Hopper? Oh, Dennis Hopper. Yeah. 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 Uh, which is not a bad cast, but still, he's bad. not a bad dude. Uh, like, but he's weird. Uh, yeah, but this is this is the Mario. I mean, this, you know, an animated Mario movie is what we've been wanting. I, yeah. I will say they've come a long way in making movies like that, genre movies. Yeah. So Sonic was awesome. Yeah, King Sonic of was a- Key is uh, Pete, uh, the mushroom guy. What, what's his name? Oh, uh, Toad. 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 Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. Speaking of Jack Black as Bowser, uh, and. He was on. I've been listening to a new podcast, Hawk versus Wolf, which is Tony Hawk and uh, Jason Ellis. Mm-hmm. And you know, uh, I love skateboarding when I was a kid, so it takes me back to my youth. But they had there's their no fr- way you could skateboard as a oh, child. I was gr- I, not great. I can. When I was, did you hit your growth spurt? Uh, yeah, that's the problem. When I hit my growth spurt, yeah, skateboard. Okay. When I moved to Lamar, skateboarding was done. It wasn't okay. as big in Lamar as when I grew up. But I was one of the first kids in my world to catch air on a, a ramp. And you know how I learned to catch air? My buddy Kevin Brown can. He was part of this. Uh, the free falling, the video for Tom Petty free yeah. falling. Mm-hmm. Uh, it taught you how to pump instead of uh, leaning into it. So mm-hmm. it was awesome. Uh, but uh, so Jack Black was on uh, the Hawk versus Wolf, their first guest. Mm-hmm. He told, and I don't know if this is public knowledge or have said it before, but the greatest song in the world that the song that they're re- going talking about yeah. is one from Metallica. Really? They sat down to try to write a song as awesome. They thought that, him and Kyle Gass thought that was the greatest song that they'd ever heard. Yeah. Wait, so what? They, Repeat this? You know, the greatest song in the world, the Tenacious oh, D song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The song they're singing about is one from Metallica. That was Really? His, yeah, because they wanted to write a song as rock and as ballad as that. And they kept fucking, and they're like, we can't, it, this is awful. awful. This is awful. Yeah. And he said, so Kyle goes, well, how about we just write a song about the greatest song in the world instead of the greatest song in the world? So he goes, Great idea. So they wrote it. So it's about Metallica's one, which yes. I thought was cool. So, like, some of the characters, back to what we were originally talking about. Mario? Yeah. Some of these characters I didn't even know had voices. Like, Kevin Michael Richardson is Kamek, which is like a little well, wizard Yeah, turtle. they're going to give us vo- things. Yeah, I know. It's just, like, really weird. Like, they're like, oh, look at this big actor we got for a character you didn't, you've never heard talk ever. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know? I'm like, okay with it. Is anybody Boo? Because Boo was my favorite character in Mario Tennis. I don't think so. He had a tricky uh, spin, and that's what I loved about him. Fred Armisen is Cranky Kong, which is the old man Kong. Oh, yeah. cool. And Armisen fits that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Do you ever watch Portlandia? No, I tried. It's so weird. I can't do it. It's just yeah, too much. It I think I watched the season or two. But I like him in a lot of yeah. things. I like him in small doses. He's too much when it's just all Fred Armisen's weirdness in yeah. a room. It's just it's just too much. Um. Uh, other shows that I watch. Uh, do you guys watch Only Murderers in the Building on Hulu? What is it? Only Murderers in the Building on Hulu? No, you know, no. in fact, I was sitting here Steve looking for... Steve Martin some... and... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, and, and his best buddy, uh, Martin, Martin Short, Martin Short and, yeah. uh, Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez. Yeah. It's good. It's fun. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, they, the synopsis is a murder happens in their building. They try and, to figure it out, right? And they're trying to figure it but they, but they're they do a podcast on it because oh, okay. uh, they're all fans of this one particular... Podcast, true, true crime true podcast, crime podcast yeah. that Tina Fey narrates, but it's not Tina Fey. She's a yeah. different character, you know. Obviously, oh, I'm gonna watch that. So they were like, "Oh, we're gonna do. A, let's do a murder podcast about this guy who died in our building," and it's it's I'll, pretty good. I'll be honest with you, the last streaming service I ever turn on to find something to watch is Hulu. See, I watch it all the time because I watch reruns of Bob's Burgers. Yeah, I, on the regular. That, that's basis. all great, but like for new content. Without Letter Kenny, I very much never turn it on, and I, I should. Like I, that movie, what that one movie we love so much that Annie Adam uh, Palm Springs, Palm Springs yeah. was on yeah. that. Yeah, you know? and then the uh, Love and Monsters was on there, which is okay. It's they, fine. They had that uh, uh, level up or what? Uh, or final level that? Uh, uh, okay, that what, That's not what it's called, but I yeah, you know what I'm talking about that uh, uh, um, Frank, Frank Grillo, Grillo movie. Yeah. That was a fun one. I think there's a uh, Bruce Willis movie with him and Frank Grillo. And it's on there too, and it's apparently it's the worst it's fucking not movie good. ever. I watched it. It's <laughs> not good. Uh, in fact, if you just say the and trust me, I keep watching them. Uh, there is a lot of made for streaming or made for VHS. That's what you should call them. Yeah, Bruce Willis movies are out there, and I keep watching every fucking one of them, and they always disappoint. There's a rumor. There's no, there is. No, I gotta tell you what. He, you know, Die Hard's not coming back. Bro. No, no. <laughs> Here's the thing. There is a rumor that he signs on to do a movie for $1 million and you get him for a day. 
And that is it. Yeah. Like, you make the movie around what you get in that fucking day. I can tell you, since I've watched a lot of crime, some mili- some space stuff going on with him, uh, it seems that way. It like, seems accurate. But why? Why do it? It's not like he needs the money. Yeah, but think about it. If you go shoot 20, 30 films in a year, you one day, and 30, 40 million dollars, you're doing great. I guess, yeah. I guess, but I mean, like, there's so many people he that, can, like, wh- are dying to get into this field. <laughs> he could make you- 200 films in one year, which is not a heavy work year, no. and make 200 million dollars at one million dollars a day. Yeah, but it... <sighs> My point is, there's a lot of people that want to do this and would kill to get a quarter of that, uh, you know. And he's just shitting on the profession. So, I, I gotta tell you what, for someone that is uh, no longer on the podcast, it's the second time she's come down. She's just she's dying itching to, to get in on this. this. Itching to be she's a part just, of it. She just wants to talk about R. Kelly being uh, did you, convicted today. Did you drink that haze in the city? That was very good. It was very good. Uh, I, you know what? Do we have anything else to talk about since no. Missy's come down and ruined the end of the podcast? R. Kelly's you guilty. Didn't talk to me. I was very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Ar- yeah, R. Kelly. I did see an article, and we can weigh in real quick before we wrap up. It said now Good. that he's been convicted, uh, should we remove? Can his we music? listen to his music now, uh, dude? Have you? Uh, so it's. Um, I've got it. I've got it. I'll I'll bring it up. There's a thing. Oh, Pete Davidson on SNL. If you've never yeah. seen him talk about it, did you, have you seen that a little Mm-mm. weekend update? We'll we'll end after we wrap it up to let you watch that and see what. I he don't want to listen it. to it, but it's very like I'll, just like sticks in your head after a while. You got to watch the Pete Davidson. He's if you have, for those that don't follow it, it's on TikTok. It's on thing. Pete Davidson weekend update. Uh, R. Kelly. He's got a solution, and I think it's perfect. Yeah. Okay. Do since since that's all we got, uh, Jay. There's no let's go blues, but the season started, preseason started. So Tom, let's go blues just for you, Jay. Bye. Okay. Hold on to your butts, and everybody. I'm gonna play the.